one. Hello and welcome to the whatever we're doing here, UK BBL Outdoor Feast Season 39 Precap. Is that the right word? Uh, that'll do. That'll do. Uh, and uh, sorry for taking so long. Um, you know, I said we'd start 10 minutes ago and then I did arrive like pretty close to 46, I think. But then we've been chatting about what we're going to talk about for like 10 minutes. So that was the that was the organizational time. Uh, anyway, uh, hello, Rob, Powell and Graf. Oh, you're here. Hello, Graf. <laughs> and Ripper Doc. Hello. Anyway, cool. Uh, oh, and uh, Rob's going to be on the... Oh, uh, and Graf, my co-host. Say hello, Graf. Hello. There we go. <laughs> I'm uh, just doing last-minute research, so that's why I'm quiet. Oh, really? Uh, sparked by what we were talking about, or just... Um, bit just both. Bit, bit both. of both. Okay. Cool. Um... <clears throat> yes, so I've done a little bit of looking at the teams and the coaches' records, but I must admit... Uh, this is bo both of us probably just going, ah, oh, well, look at that, and look at that. Um, and not, you know, it's, I, I have not scripted any part of this. It's, people will be possibly unsurprised to hear from any other streams I've done. Um, but we are, are, are we, first of all, I guess, we're going to end this show by predict by giving our top three predictions, right? Yes, so I should probably start thinking about that. Then. Yeah, and in in a in a move of organisation, uh, previously, uh, well, just just you know, I'm doing it now. Um, I have I'm gonna I've put a place where I'm gonna record what we say, and that way, if we do a like end of season or halfway through season show again, we can go back and go, oh look, this is what we said. And we were so wrong because basically every season, like pr predicting who's going to do well is really hard, right? Yeah. 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 Well, do you... I, I don't know. There, is, there are some teams that you can tell are going to do well. They may not win, but you can generally say teams are likely to do well. But I mean, yeah, it always falls down to dice. But I mean, I totally thought Scold would be top of the division. Um, with Zon's last season, because the division wasn't quite as uh, bashy as last season. I thought the Zons would would do well, uh, and he had a couple or three terrible games, coincidentally against you and me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, where his poor guy, his Zons got wrecked. <laughs> Um, it's two seasons back to back now that I've diced the guy completely. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's a point at which it's not a dicing if it's happening regularly. That's all I'm going to say. You know, I, I, th I think he had like a three plus to score and it failed. Um, <laughs> there were things like that that just went completely wrong for the guy. And then when that failed, I just I think next turn removed about three or four players. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he was at my uh, he was going to win the division last season top of the list type thing and um he ended up what uh well not winning it is the short answer i think we got one sort of that we said would be in the top three we both said uh steve O's and necro would do well and i think they finished second or third yeah they were second i've got the table in, in front of me i'm fact, like you know if we uh i i, I can get the table to be uh, on the screen if I... I'm still slightly bitter about the dwarf dodge play on the final turn that denied me promotion to the Prem. <laughs> uh, wait. Uh, didn't you... So, your, your... my final match yeah. my final match was against the dwarves, the mm -hmm. Bar Buccaneers, and we drew a because he did, um, I can't remember, like three four plus dodges, three plus dodge, double GFI, and something else on the final turn. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty, like, so that, and that would have put you in the same place that he was, which is, yep. which is in a, uh, you know. It, it was one of those games where I removed a ton of players and was in a strong position and. His final desperation thing worked. So yeah, 
But it's my fault for allowing it. So there we go. Uh, but you and me ended up on exact on the, the same record, except for you know, obviously I'm rats, so I got got a higher touchdown differential. Um, you know, I don't even remember what my last game was last season, but uh, you know, there any one of those six games I didn't win. I'm sure some of them must have been due to a very small number of dice, but that's how it works, isn't it? You know, you can't win them all. It's a dice game. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling I I thought that, that the Sirs Vampires were going to do well last season. So I think my three backs for last season were the Drakenhof Disciples, Neuromantics, and uh, whatever Skulls team is called. Um, but yeah. Anyway, let's, let's, let's get on with actually looking at the teams. Um... So uh, we'll we'll look through the the nine teams that have actually accepted not accepted their tickets but joined the divisions, and uh, then oh actually no so and the other three we should all be able to find um, in uh, uh, in the over in the the general hiding in the corner <laughs> yeah but it happens to be uh, not saying you know anything about orc coaches generally but it's three orc coaches who have not turned up yet. Which is mighty, mighty coincidental. Maybe lazy people pick orcs, which I, you know, I, I clearly am not playing enough orcs. Then I don't know. That's kind of a bit <laughs> user tree, isn't it? Tarring all these orc players with the same brush. It could also be the fact that this division is full of two chaos, two Nurgle, and a Chorf Claw team. So the orcs are hiding from the claw, which you are part of. You and your dirty claw brethren. Well, if you, uh, I. I mean, if you look at my team, my team is probably the least killy out of all of those teams. I mean, Redis's team has has been probably the most murdered, though. So, you know, uh, yeah, we we'll, we will see. You've still got <laughs> some some decent players there, but yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll 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 get to that in order. And I'd like to point out at the moment, I am not a claw team. However much I would love to be a claw team, and I considered turning down plus strength to have claw on my team. But we'll get there again in a second. Hey, Rob. Yeah. Um, going on a cup run this season. Well, you know, I, I am I, I'm pretty certain I am a solid tier two coach generally. So like in like Gruff and I have been in the same divisions in tier two in Rebel and UK BBL together. And, and not, OCC. And OCC, we're, we're together as well. So, you yeah, know, we're... We're, we're both we're both solid tier two coaches, I'd say. Uh, you know, maybe... Maybe, but maybe, but probably not. I'll probably just hang around tier two like I do in every other league. I, I'm <laughs> probably uh, tier three with a bit of luck to get to tier two. <laughs> but you never know. This might be our season, right? Or you know, this and next season. Uh, yep. you know, never say this, never. This time. This is the time. Yeah. Let's start though by having a look at Sid Insidious's uh, 2,200 chaos team. Uh, to, as a lovely entry, entree to the division. Sid, a lovely uh, coach who I met at the UKBBL tabletop. Um, a, a nicer, and, and he was at the Worlds as well, in fact. A nicer coach you couldn't possibly... Uh, well, actually, there's one other person who's who's actually got a bit of a meme in the UKBBL f for being a nice guy. But Sid, Sid's, Sid's, and who is in also in this division, I should point out. But Sid is also a very nice guy. Uh... For a 2,200 TV chaos team, it's not not as killy as I was expecting, actually. Like I had a no. quick look at it before. It's got like they got some nice stat ups. That leaping warrior, leaping blodge, strength five warrior is a bit mental. <laughs> yeah, and also there's also the warrior that is block claw jump up tackle. Yeah, see, I feel like I feel like once you take uh yeah it's confusing does he he hasn't he clearly took jump up with the intention of kill skills and then i guess all his tackle died so he had to get tackle probably yeah it's, you know it, it's always a shame when you get that kind of stuff Cle going on on a team yeah clearly rob's not been in in tier two much because this is this looks like a very friendly team to me this is this is only three mighty blow that i mean that could be uh, only two claw yeah could could be much much worse for a, for a 2200 team uh all of that tv locked up in stats and doubles 
Yeah. Got two Chaos Warrior doubles, the Chaos Warrior with the uh, Strength 5 Agi 4. You've got uh, the Agi on Goat. I mean, I do love that warrior. That's 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 a crazy warrior on his own to, to build a team around. Foul appearance on the... Well, taking extra arms on the big hand Agi4 Eastman. But is that going to be... For, I mean, because you've got the two there. You've got the two heads and the um, the one above it. Mm. And the, the, so I'm guessing one is a retriever, one is a kind of receiver. Who get who? Why, why do neither of them have short hands? Short, you, you need a ball carrier with short hands. You know, strip ball True. is a, strip ball is a thing. Did he have one die that had uh, mm. short hands? That that suggests that he's he's. I mean, he's basically got three potential ball carrying players, and he may have had a fourth that he's that's died. Is kind of the the possibility we're looking I'm at there. Just having a look because I think he was in Prem last season. Oh, is he another? Is he a um, coming down from the? the I've got a feeling he might, or he might have been a sideways. Uh, he's not prem. There he is. Yeah, sideways. He was in Alt North West last season. Um, and you're looking to see if he had any. Well, the last game of the season ended with him having six of his players badly hurt. So that's that's okay. something. Can you see? You you can't see dead players, can you? Uh, depends on um, where you. There is some so hands. yeah, he did. He didn't have anything with sure hands in the last match. About talking amongst yourselves. Okay, but anyway, it's an interesting team. He's, I, I'd guess from the fact he's got piling on on that chaos warrior that his plan. I mean, sorry, that he's got jump up on that play, chaos warrior that his plan is to uh, get piling on. And he just hasn't got around to it with anyone else. Uh, but yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a weird mix. But I've just had a look, gone back about four games, and I can't see a short hands player. So I'm guessing he's just been relying on big hand as you fall. Yeah, maybe scoring quickly and then leaping, <laughs> leaping for victory. It's one of those things that if, if you're not facing elves very often, then people tend to forget about short hands as a Hmm. Um, well, yeah, and, um, and to be fair, there's only a rat team and one dark elf team in this division who are elves. So, yeah, um, I guess the uh, I, the legend skill for Loki Star the Kiwi is uh, very long legs as well, right? <laughs> I'd love to see that. <laughs> um, yeah, and he's not gonna. He should. He should get there as well. I reckon. Unless something goes disastrously wrong. Mm. But uh, the other thing is not that much guard. No, yeah, no, I was, I was going to say, you know, when we were talking about the murder potential of the team, uh, very little, like, four guard. I mean, normally you, you, you often get teams where uh, you often get killed, you know, kill teams where they've kind of for, forgone guard for kill skills, but you don't even have that here, do you? No, I was going to say, for, for Chaos, you tend to see a lot more guard because they have the strength access far more readily available. Hmm. Um, instead, he's gone for these crazy skills, which I'm guessing he must be working if he got up into the Prem. No, he didn't. He all off best. Oh, sorry. All off. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, it's worked so far up to a point, so let's see how it goes for the rest of it. Um, but when you've got that guy jumping into the cages, that's going to be a 9 FP for the deal. It could be, for, yeah, it could work. Strength 5. That's it. And then you've got the two other goats to kind of recover. Yeah. I feel like why foul appearance when you've got big hands? Shouldn't he have had the two heads? I don't know. It's a bit, I'm yeah. guessing foul appearance is... Um, you know, Keep one is six. One is six. He won't get. It. Hmm. Maybe he had too many players get killed, and and also rolled too many uh, foul appearance fails, so didn't want to. Uh, you know, keep on going. But uh, Sid has a pretty good record 
Uh, I looked on Spikebot, you know, earlier uh, at all the coaches. Um, and um, where is he? There we are. Let's let's move to the. Ah, that's that's why I was thinking about the Prem because he was in the Prem two seasons ago. Ah, okay, cool. Uh, so he was. Got, the team got beaten up. I'm guessing because they had a record of zero four seven. So I think two seasons ago he got smashed and probably had last season to recover. Uh, in West was it? Uh, it was in Prem East. Prem East. Okay. Because um, you know I, I'm pretty happy that. Um, uh, Davo and his Black Star Crusade have been put in in Altdorf I, I West. I think we all are. Because <laughs> I was I was petrified that staying down meant that we were going to end up having him. But uh, oh, and I was wondering if maybe he was. He, but he wasn't. He was in Prem West at that time, so you can't blame him for killing Insidious's team. <laughs> Probably. Uh, anyway, should we move on to talking of teams that have been destroyed? Um, Rennes's team. Poor Rennes. Um, he was, he's another coach, uh, like you and me, who was in Altdorf East last season. And actually his teams, uh, you know, like, I mean, he's still got a lot of red crosses next to Chorfs, but other than that, it's kind of a full team again. He didn't he have a really nice, uh, ball centre. Wasn't uh, well, one of them a, a strength up or something or am i thinking of a different league if you go back far enough he had two really good ball centaurs they both died uh, but i think i think he i think one of them was one of them survived into the beginning of, of last season and then died I but yeah so... feeling i might have killed it i can't remember <laughs> uh yeah i don't i i he he had a nice recovery game against oh look it's got a sign this player is old enough to retire and could leave the squad each time a new career year begins. Wow. I've Aha, so that's 105 matches. It's showing for darker, burnt mouth. So I don't know any, if people were, were paying attention before, but I was uh, flicking through a lot of um, uh, Sid's team looking to see if I could see, uh, you know, someone who is near retirement because... We were looking when while looking earlier, we found some players who are near retirement. Um, and I this is the first time I've noticed that sign on a player before, you know. So that can be really because I'm guessing his more developed players are close to it. Hmm. What about the uh claw uh chorf? Oh, he's only got one claw chorf, hasn't he? Yeah, I just checked. Uh, I didn't kill a bull, I killed his other. Uh, claw mighty blow. Uh, no, it was in fact the claw chorf I was looking at when I got that. I think. Okay. Yeah. So I mean that could be a big blow for the guy during this season if I mean his more developed players go. Um, that's the both of the chorfs with uh, who are you know level. Well, the, the the legend and the superstar are both within uh, retirement age basically. Uh -huh. What about his AG5 Hobgoblin? Just checking that right now. Um, no, not quite. So, in fact, uh, 11 games. So, oh, it might, it will get to its first roll this season, at the end of this season, I think, if, if, my, if I remember the numbers vaguely correctly. I think it's around 100 and something. Um, so, by the end um, of the season, the, the AG5 could have gone as well. And this, so, this could <coughs> start to think about retiring this team if it doesn't get anywhere this season i mean or alternatively it's basically uh oh 100 games is, where, is what rob says so ba basically this is well i mean there's like three players who are that old right the rest of the team has been replaced already but would you want to go into the prem with if you got rid of those three would you want to go into the prem uh well I mean, you know, would you want to go into the Prem with this team as it is? <laughs> is another. I mean, you know, you want to get into the Prem, whatever, right? It doesn't matter how bad some teams. Yeah. You'd rather be fighting for a chance to win the cup than not, right? I guess so. Uh, and let's face it, dice can happen. So you yeah. Never know. Uh, yeah, and I I would say that having a referee's rest area is not the way to 
help a, a team recover and recuperate because it you know it might be, might feel nice getting your fouls in but it, oh I did do damage to him I did damage to him because I was fouling him with complete abandon because I had a bribe um, and I you know I think the the wizard stadium and the bribe stadium are very dangerous for teams because of the attrition you can end up inflicting upon yourself with them. And this I was going to say, by the looks of it, you killed a hobgoblin. Oh, was that it? Okay. I knew I killed something. And you killed one of your line rats. Yeah. Matt, okay, fine. Um... But yeah, um, I, I don't think the team is in that bad a state as long as stuff doesn't die off too early in the season for the guy. Yeah, I mean, I quite like, I, you know, low TV chores are great. The, like, the weird thing is, though, this is not a low TV team, is it? Like, they, they've they got the Minotaur is not helping. I guess you just want to have we, everything. We had problems. Both of us had problems with that Minotaur at the start of last season, saying we didn't really think it should be. Mm. Um, and I seem to remember it didn't really behave well in quite a few matches this season. That's what minus, season. that's what that's what all wild animals do. That's the thing. They're not they're usually not really worth it unless you know they're, they're adding so much TV. This team this team could be a seventeen hundred TV team without the Minotaur, right? And getting inducements, like a few hundred TV of inducements against other teams, which means a lot of, you know, stars, spare players. You know, you could get a Thark against some yep. of the teams in this division with that kind of TV. Um, and it's just like, instead, you've got a player who just doesn't always do what you want and is basically more of a liability than an advantage. You've got to be blitzing with him every time and he's one of your least reliable players to be blitzing with. Yeah, you need to be blitzing with him a lot, at least. I mean, you can leave him around, but like teams where they're already such a high TV that it doesn't make any difference is like so. You know, lots of kill chaos teams, uh, like the aforementioned Black Star Crusade, had a, have had my nose and have my nose, and it doesn't matter when you're when you're twenty two, twenty three hundred TV. That cost of a mino is not that big a deal. You're you're adding. No bloat to an already massive TV advantage team, so it doesn't but actually cost But when you as much. the team could be getting two, three, four hundred TV of inducements for the sake of getting rid of that mino, that's when yeah. it can have a big impact. Exactly. Um, I mean, the, the fact is he could almost get Hathark against Sidious as it is. <laughs> uh, <coughs> anyway, should we move on? Yeah. So the next Some is more chaos. yeah more chaos. So the top line is all claw. So we're just going to be looking at claw and claw and claw. Um, although actually, so after looking at Insidious's chaos and then this chaos um, and Renis, it's not as clawy as I was thinking. You know, I was expecting at least one of these five teams to be full on murder chaos. Uh, good to see claw on this team for a second. Sorry, say again. Uh, to see, I struggled to see the claw on this team for a second. Yeah, just the one. Yeah. It, 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 it's instead of claw. This is an Amazon team. This is a bludge team, except with some stat ups, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's actually it's, it's, it's weird, isn't it? It's, it's actually not that high. T I mean, it's kind of high TV, but yeah, <laughs> and I, I, I don't really like the Mino again. See, uh, I'm not sure... I, I didn't notice it was a Mino at first. I was thinking he just got four Chaos Warriors. Hmm. Um, but yeah, a Mino, it's not really adding much to the team. Oh, uh, that is a double niggled uh, Blodge Mighty Bow Claw Warrior. <laughs> so, um, they, they, they might be, you know... An unlucky uh, start to the season, and this might be a no claw team. Um, uh, but oh yeah, also, uh, so I, I have a feeling we will see the um, about to retire symbol about above a few of the names of this team. Um, where are we? Well, maybe not. Maybe so. This is the other thing. Maybe uh, having all your play. Oh look, there's ninety three. So ninety three is 
vaguely close to retirement, isn't it? Seven games. Yeah. So possibly in this, uh, you know. Season. This is the thing. I do remember this. I, I'm aware of this team because I think they started in UK BBL the season before me, but I've never actually played the guy. Uh, you know, yeah, we were talking about this before, and I, I don't really know anything about him as a coach. I've, um, you know, not bumped into him anywhere else. He like, and I, I got his, um, you know, his coach record up on Twit on um, the the Spike Bot, and. He's playing in a Twitch Blood Bowl League, which I'm in as well, but he's only played seven games there. Other than that, he's only played UK BBL for about uh, 90... Well, those 90 games you saw that one player had, that's how many games this team has played. And, uh, you know, I don't think it's a great record. You you said, you know, he went up to the Prem and has come back down again. And maybe uh, that's, you know, a lot of losses from going up. And getting smashed down by tier one well, opponents. Well, I mean, if you scroll back through the over the seasons, it seems to be a very one way or the other way record. Of some seasons he's done quite well, other seasons he's done really badly and had a lot of loss. So he seems to swing from one extreme to the other. Um, I mean, I will always uh, say in divisions like this, I think some of it is just if you stick around you generally start to rise up because i mean i've i've been in that situation as well. i wouldn't say my record has been great with my teams but i've managed to rise up to tier two so oh, you that's mean, nothing you mean it's leagues. nothing against coaches so yeah yeah um that's nothing against any of the coaches but you do see it happen that if you stick around then through bonus options or other means then people do other times you'll have a great record and you deserve, you, not deserve, but you, you go up. It's, you know, it could be a bit of that factor. I mean, it is true that also the, the kind of the more, like, especially this kind of the chaos teams, they, they do get better and better the longer they play. Right. So, you know, um, you're like sticking around. You're not going to, we're not saying you're literally going to, if you just play forever badly, you're going to go up, but you know, there are some there are some coaches who will rise to tier one. You know, every, you know, go up, get promoted every season, go straight to tier one, play you know, amazing blood bowl every season. And there are some coaches, you know, who will go up usually or you know whatever. But you know, just by playing longer, eventually you you get those promotions, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's people in this division that I I know. Um, They've been in the Prem, re-rolled, and then have secured promotion in consecutive seasons when they've re-rolled to a new team and are now back up in our division here. Mm. And we'll probably be fighting to try and get back into the Prem for next season. So those people are doing it efficiently and quickly rising up. Others, they'll just kind of ping-pong up and down. And it's more just, if you've got one of those teams that can just stick it out and improve over time, you'll get there. And I mean, and most teams do kind of improve over time anyway, just by rolling, you know, you, you players die, they get replaced, they get replaced by players who roll the stat up, you protect those players better, your team, like, teams will develop into more stat up teams the longer you play them, usually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, there are times where you're stuck in a division, like, maybe this, where maybe uh, some of the teams will come out of this, this division with worse teams than they went in if the claw fires no, if the claw teams fire yeah again. quite possibly but um, I, I think um i think that chaos team just you know they, with those stat ups it then nicely positioned they just need the warriors to kind of stick around and replace the missing warrior as well mm -hmm. yeah um and i mean one of the things i would say is this team doesn't have any um chafe there's that like who are you putting on the line against the other claw kill teams, you know? But I'm guessing that's a result of him being in the Prem last season. Um, mm. His record was I think a two one eight, so I'm guessing he's had a lot of attrition yeah. on his team last. To, so to still be in this position is actually quite, imp you know, he's quite good. He, he's still got a team there. It's not a completely destroyed team. Mm. No tackle. Uh, when we, you were saying not much guard for the previous Chaos team. There's even less guard here. Yeah. 
Um, but some, I like the setups. I like the, I do quite like the blodge. Uh, every, like, you know, what's that? Uh, five, five doubles that are giving him blodge. And well, it's, it's the reason why Zons are so annoying is because of all blodge. So yeah. if it's strength four players, then it's even worse. Mm. Okay. And next, uh, Ripperdock and his Nurgle. This is the Killy team. Oh, I've just noticed he's got 300 TV of bank. So um, I guess he's, his TV is actually much lower than this. So, you know, let's say uh, more like 1860 once he spends his money. Um, and yet, as you say, like because he possibly because he's got no stats, he's got a block beast, which is lovely, three claw mighty blow uh warriors and a blodge firm guarder um i mean also a god stand firm here as well and is that another niggle hey toby um only two rerolls so i'm guessing maybe he had a leader yeah i mean some people are you know do just play quite well with uh with uh you know less rerolls and also i think you know i think you like it's really important to not be too bloaty. I think those teams with lots of stat ups who are, you know, supposed to be kill teams are making their teams worse by having stats rather than kill skills, you know. Or you, you kind of, you know, you have to make that decision about which way you go in, you know, in Blood Bowl. Like it feels to me like if you want a team with lots of strength and agi and stuff, I'm not sure that I'd choose Chaos or Nurgle. To, to be the carriers of that, if that makes sense. I don't know, you can get some fun players. <laughs> uh, Toby just said, I had the choice between you two or Dimmy, and unfortunately Dimmy is sober. Toby, Toby, listen to me. I, I love you. Love you, mate. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that was, that was uh, you know, I was there. I, I tuned into Dimmy just as he was reaching full, uh, you know, uh, making no sense point of drunkenness it was it was a sight it was a, a very uh, special stream anyway uh sorry Move, moving swiftly on uh yeah no this this to me if you're going to play nurgle or chaos this is what you should be trying to build this is like almost almost perfect i'd say he does yeah. oh hit uh, that first warrior i looked at has 117 games played that's uh that's a player who's about to retire it. Like I think that's that's close to the um that, that's that, enforced, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's almost the top point of yeah, he's got rip uh, there oh right, Ripper Dog. Um definitely going this season. But, you know, three three other uh warriors pretty well positioned to 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 take over. Ooh. Yeah, as long as those three survive then I could see him not suffering too badly from losing that one especially as it's got the armor bust and things like that already oh i've just realized it's the it's the fact that he's got so many skills that i could that the armor uh that the injury cross is is uh is missing from that player i didn't realize that straight away um uh, but he's you know this so again teams with not much guard this team w is, will very soon only have two guarders on it. And one of them is niggled. Playing no, yeah. <coughs> it's, um, it's something that I'm struggling with a bit, is getting enough guard. Hmm. Um, um, yeah, you need, you need some of the rotters to roll some doubles to give you what feels like enough guard on so, Ripper, do you want to tell us if you had um, three rerolls before? I mean, if you had a leader before um, and you've, you've just lost the leader or whether you just always played on with two. Also, I mean, you know, I, I like the idea of, of trying to keep your TV low by having two rerolls, but especially when they're 70k each, which is expensive. Um, but I usually will take a, a cheerleader and a coach assistant to kind of Nope, just had two all the time. Yeah, well, I mean, if you've got sure hands and you... Uh, you don't have sure hands either. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm guessing sure hands. Oh, no, well, yeah, there's no sure hands. Yeah. No. Interesting. Again, another another player where two heads and extra arms before sure hands. 
Uh, yeah, that was a mistake, says Ripper. <laughs> this is the I, I dislike playing Nola as well. I, I really dislike not having three reels personally, but I think that's just because I'm a bit. Um, but yeah, it's. I think this team does look really nice. It's one of the ones that I am more nervous about facing in the division. Um, just because it is a nicely rounded team. Yeah. Okay. Well, should we move on to your team as we're looking at for one logo to other? Uh, and sure. also because I'm conscious of the time and also because I want to uh, see all the teams. Because I, w I might come back to Ripper's team uh, because it might be a team I think might, uh, you know, get promoted. Uh, so, your team. A, a no block uh, beast. <coughs> yeah. Well, you know, he's got guard now, so mm -hmm. it gives me that additional guard. Uh, that, if if there's nothing good on the next skill, mm -hmm. then he'll probably get recycled. Um, I think he does okay where he is at the minute, so yeah. I'll keep him around. I mean, beasts are pretty effective once they've got stand firm. And, I mean, they're pretty effective with just stand firm. Or you know, as we, even with no skills, when they're just standing there being tentacly and annoying, it's uh, the thing. I mean, I've I've really learned to embrace people saying like, just the best thing to do with the beast is pretty much leave it. Yeah. For the match, and and that's why with the skills he's got, it's fine. Just leave him park somewhere and let him do. Do not activate him if he's next to someone. Don't bother hitting them. Just don't activate him. Uh, you actually, oh, oh, I, I was going to mention about Ripper's team, no dirty player either. You you have a dirty player rotter, which is, you know, which I approve of. It's one of your former players. <laughs> yeah, it is, Ratmio. <laughs> so I think he only got that um, recently. Uh, I think he got an MVP and I don't know what else. Did he get did he get an MVP in in our game when you uh when you got him? No, you can't have no, you get him at the end of the game with, with Nurgle, don't you? Yeah, I, I can't remember, but yeah, he, he uh He scored a touchdown. Like a good yeah. like a good rat. M what MVP and a touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also been murdered a lot of times. Yeah, so <laughs> He's doing a job. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm glad to finally got rid of the move busted wrestle tackle rotter that I'd had since pretty much the first season that I kept putting on the line and would never. <laughs> but he was your only tackle for a long time. In fact, yeah, he was your only tackle for a long time as well, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, and you've still only got a movement five tackle player, so, uh, you know, not much better. Maybe ah. I'll take it on the warrior. Yeah, yeah, no, and and in fact that you know I've experienced tackle uh, warriors recently and think, you know, it's a good skill to have. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's why I've kind of left decision on that guy until I see what happens. You might actually get tackle like if you're basically if you're facing Zons in the first or second week, you're taking tackle on on him to get some extra attrition. Yeah, although I didn't need much tackle last season against them, so. <laughs> Um, and another warrior pretty close to leveling as well um, and do you want to talk about what a revelation your Agi 5 leap Pestagor has been <laughs> um, when I remembered that he had leap so I didn't have to dodge through tackle zones it's become very um, I remember playing against yourself where you'd left a guy on a sideline and as you clicked in turn you're like oh why have I done that and then there was me thinking, oh, yeah, easy. I can just dodge through those three tackle zones and just hit surface. Yeah. And just clicked instinctively. And then as I clicked it, I sort of thought, hold on, why didn't I leap? Because it was just a straight two plus leap in. Yeah. And, and it was, I think and the it dodge was through failed. It was through tackle as well. <laughs> yeah. And, and the dodge failed. Yeah. And uh, it was a turnover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then you, you turn over next turn, so it was all good. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you know. A pestigore or beast with horns can be, you know, a pretty amazing ball sacker. You're going to get very, yeah. You don't even need very long legs with Agi Five, do you? Uh, just get tackle next, I guess. Probably, yeah. Um, well, now that I've been using him better, uh, it's been working out quite well. 
Hmm. Um, and you do actually have a dedicated ball, ball carrier, blodge and movement seven. That's pretty nice. And two heads. Yeah. Took uh, sure hands first, you know, because of the re uh, playing with only two rerolls originally. Yeah. Uh, and you've got your fourth Pestigore, uh, unlike the other Nurgle team. Uh, yeah. So that was the replacement for the original killer that died a season and a half ago. So the intention is that he will also start getting kill skills? Most likely, yeah, just as the backup. Yeah. And then probably cycle out the movement five. Hmm. Eventually. Yeah, unless he rolls like strength or something, who knows? Hmm. But your your warriors and beast are looking pretty pretty good as a and, and in fact those two other pestigors pretty pretty good as a team, right? That's a pretty solid it's team. The first season going into it where I feel like the team is in a reasonable state to be able to do. Yeah. Okay. So should we move on to my team? Yep. Uh so last season they were in a reasonable state, uh, I thought. Uh, and then I decided it would be a great idea to buy a level three stadium because I had too much money um, and to, like 15 players or something. Uh, and then I got murdered. Like, And then that thing of, of rats never kind of being able to recover from getting murdered where they just every game seems to feel like uh, going back down to having loners and being whatever. Um, and yet but, you still did quite well in, in those matches yeah you know rats rats can win but it it's i've had a few games of of needing to well you know uh i've had a niggled gutter runner for a very long time he finally got armor bust in the last game of the season so as soon as i have 80k to replace him he's getting replaced and was it you that uh that agi busted my ball sacker i can't remember if it was you or who was it I believe I removed the guard guard, or maybe gave him the niggle, I can't remember. I agi bust the uh, ball sacker, and I murdered the one-turner. Yeah, but well, he wasn't a one-turner. He, he, had, he had movement up. At that point, he was sidestep, block, diving tackle movement, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, not a natural one-turner by any by I, any I just remember removing three gutters yeah. in the map. Yeah, yeah. No, you, I, think, I think you... Just MNG'd all, all's rats that rats well. Um, and uh, yeah, and obviously you killed Ratmio. So Ratmio was, and he was the one who was my diving, was meant to be a blodge diving tackle player, but rolled plus movement after all that. Um, and uh, yeah, and Agi bust Juliet. Uh, which, you know, has been a pain. <laughs> uh, Juliet will get replaced at some point, but um, I guess my next rat will be another wrestle one, actually. I don't know. But anyway, uh, other than that, um, I got plus strength on Gildan Verm, um, which was, I mentioned earlier, I was considering turning down the strength for Claw because of how much I feel... Uh, rats do better with one claw piece, or even you know, preferably two. But you know, that's the, the that strength has been the only double this team has rolled on Storm Vermin so far, uh, and I've been through four Storm Vermin, I think. Uh, so you know, a few levels in there, but you know, you'll get lucky. Yeah, this time we've got some crap. Yeah, hopefully, and you know, and Gildan Verms, pretty. I quite like the plus strength frenzy, you know combination uh, and with the agi bust he's basically glart jr with short short of stand firm is you know he's got frenzy instead of stand firm i think and something else different maybe but you know uh and also a plus strength tackle wrestle uh line rat who's surprisingly useful um but yeah I will be going into my first game with no guard and probably my second game with only one guard and a movement five dirty player, which is immensely amusing to me. Yeah. Um, it's uh, an interesting team. Yeah. Um, it's rats, you know. Hopefully I'll survive a few games. I get, a, you know, some nice run where I can actually build my team back up into having, you know, 12 or 13 players or something crazy like that but uh 
I'm not going to hold my breath. Go all out and get a rat ogre. Uh, I started with a rat ogre. I like rat, rat ogres early on, but in this division against five high TV teams with claw, I don't think I'm getting a rat ogre, no. <laughs> might, I might induce a loner rat ogre, actually. No, I'm not. Maybe? No, no, probably not. Um, anyway, um, so on to Skull's unpronounceable team, which means something. What does it mean in Russian? It means something in Russian, obviously. Is it like, uh, is it like women or something? I can't remember the ladies or I don't know. You Svet know more about them than me. Svetlana or something, except he's he spelt it wrong or something. So I, I think we talked about this in the game or in a stream or a game once where he went, oh yeah, except I I typoed it. You know, so it doesn't actually, it's not actually right. Um, Zons being all Zonny. God, I hate Zons. They are literally my least favourite team in this game. Uh, the who... team is looking a lot leaner than I remember it being. Yeah. And whilst, I mean, whilst being still pretty good, you know, having all the tools you'd want, you know, three guard. Two strength ups. I guess you'd want an Agi up. So, oh, yeah, and an Agi up. There you go. Who's probably going to get sure hands at some point. Um, I, I think, if memory serves correctly, he's lost quite a few startups. He used to have more Agi players and maybe um, an additional strength. Did, uh, or did he have movement up as well? I think, did he have a couple of movement up or two? I can't remember. I, th I think he had an Agi catcher. Yeah, maybe. Um... But you know, solid Zon team. How yeah. how well they survive is you know as always the issue. Any game you can get accidentally you know murdered off the off the pitch, right? Yeah, I think he he's probably due a bit of a run of form to be honest, because he really did have a rough um, part last season where it, I think over the course of maybe four games his team just imploded. I was basically starting with your game as well, wasn't it? I think there was one before mine, and then oh, it just okay. went downhill from that. Yeah. Oh, that was it. I remember that. He, when he played Farron's Orcs, he because we, we were talking about it during my... Um, he played Farron's Orcs, and basically that ended up a 3-2 or a 4-3 or something stupid like that against Orcs. Yeah. And he's basically saying he he had to sacrifice players to get that win. Um, and from there, he just couldn't recover until quite late into the season and get the team number back. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's why, you know, you and me, uh, yeah, he had, he had, he was carrying a couple of niggles when he faced me as well. And I based uh, three, he had three niggled players when I faced him last season. And, uh, and that was largely responsible for how quickly I removed his players from the pitch because I was fouling and mighty blowing the niggled players every chance I got, basically. Um, and But, I mean, I imagine we'll see Roxana in most of his games again. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he does this season. Yeah, I mean, he, he was my, my tip for last season. Um, um uh, we'll, we'll see if he's still in the top whatever uh anyway next is doug low who i mentioned um sid's being one of the nicest people i've met in blood bowl um doug is is mimetically the nice guy of uk bbl he is uh you know kind of like there there we've met someone who looks a bit like doug at the worlds and he was nasty doug compared to nice doug um, lovely, lovely man, uh, but he's playing dwarves. Um, which, yeah, you know, but he's, he is playing death roller dwarves, so you know there is that, and he has yes. he has rolled block on his death roll. <laughs> A bit of history on this team. Um, I started my Nurgle team in the same division as Doug started this um, dwarf, and Doug had such a horrible first season with the team. Um, I think he lost three death rollers over the course of the season or something like that. And the team just had players die left and right. Oh, I think um, I think I remember him talking about rebuying it every, all the time, actually. Now you mentioned that. Yeah. yeah and he he, um, he stuck through it, carried out the season, and then just re-rolled into the same team the following season. And this is that team that he re-rolled into. And it's now developed quite nice. 
Um, I mean, I, I know someone else that has done a similar kind of team like this, and yeah, gets the bribe stadium every time, and mm -hmm. doing well with it. So, um, I think, yeah, it, this could be a team to watch. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, Doug's record with Doug's record on Spike Bot is exactly fifty percent, right? But it's worth pointing out that a third of those games are halflings, right? He has he has a ninety one percent win rec win record with Kemri. He and that's that's a ninety one percent as in he's won five and drawn one and not lost any games with Kemri at all, which is a, a ridiculous little stat. Um, and I do know that he he took Kemri to the World Cup before the one or with, or the one before that, uh, the one that I went to. So <clears throat> he's an experienced player and a good one. Uh, his dwarf win rate in Spikebot is basically this team and that other team you talk of. I think, uh, yeah, uh, which you know. But uh, it's got some again. So we we talked earlier about a jump up on a player who then didn't take piling on, and his blitzer has jump up and stand firm, which seems like a. I guess that is quite a good combination that I've never thought about before. But that's that's basically assuring yourself of getting a, a back a, a hit, isn't it? I've never well, considered that. Uh, but also, I guess jump up is useful because it gives you mobility on the dwarf team to some degree because you're not paying the penalty um for having to stand them up yeah but would you rather have a jump up stand firm blitzer or would you rather have a blodge stand firm blitzer like your True. is it better to remove the chance that you're going to get knocked over or is it better to be able to hit back um when you are knocked over is an interesting kind of mental well know, but also if, if they're knocked over and the player that knocked them over moves away it means you can quickly get that blitzer up and back into things mm. and then the stand firm can become a problem again yeah I mean you know stand firm I mean oh, oh well we're talking about teams not having very much guard this team could have more guard right true um, yeah, uh, but stand firm everywhere is painful. And when you've got a death roller that's guaranteed pretty much all the time, on the yeah, field, it can become a big distraction. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, good team, good coach. I am definitely putting Doug into my, uh, you know, teams to to qualify this season, top three. Um. Okay. Anyway, all right, so next we have the penultimate team that we can see now, Greg Cads, Orange Devils, Dark Elves. Um, now, that's pretty, pretty good team. Yeah, and this is one of the guys that, that I know. So he originally had Pro Elves mm -hmm. and pretty much got back to back promotions with those up to the prem and i don't know how many seasons he was in the prem but then re-rolled to this team and has gone from the bottom tier and got back to back promotions back up to tier two so and i think his records when i had a quick look were pretty good with the team yeah so he he's one of the players so uh he's one of the players <coughs> sorry uh on spike bot who's played a lot of games he's a he's one of those people who plays champ who's played championship ladder and has played like 760 games and he's played 300 games in la ligue francaise um and then another 100 or so in uk bbl as well so he's he's put his games in and even with 1300 games his win rate is 57 percent, which is which is a good win rate for, for you know for any coach right so he's yeah. he's probably just on his way through to to tier one to to play the other big boys. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean I don't know much of the guy other than recognizing the name, as I say, from him promoting it previously. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but, you know, solid team, nothing nothing surprising or, you know, I, I wouldn't go as far as saying interesting, but, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, Dark Elves can look a bit dull. You know, every, every double is one, one Mighty Blow double and everything else is, is guard. Uh, any stat ups you take and blodge on everything else or rodge and yeah. one tackle and one strip, you know, done. Oh, and a, and a kicker, of course. You know, it's it's not uh, the most. You know, it's it's not an interesting team to talk about the team development with, is it? It's not exciting to look at, but it does the job. Yeah, but his record is probably pretty good. Uh, anyway, three three losses. That's that's yeah, that's nice. Very nice. Uh, yep, yeah. not had enough money to spend on on other things, but you know. Fan factor of ten is always is, is usually a good sign as well, right? Yeah. That's that's a, a, a team who's winning lots and gaining fan factor from winning and then not losing enough to to loot, drop back down. Uh, you know, if ever you see a team with ten or more, it's usually a good team. All right, so now we have to go into the main league because the three teams who haven't joined yet, their teams are still in. Um, uh, in uh, in UK BBL generally, they just haven't gone into the the correct division yet. So first up is Jacob Eath's backstabbing Blackhawks. Um, see now this this is a and this is the highest TV of the three Orc teams who haven't joined yet. Yeah, this out of when you look at the teams, this probably looks the more developed. Which again, you know. I, I would I would wonder if if uh, you know they're not they're, they're still not an amazingly solid looking team. This is a team that's been beaten up at some point, right? Sorry, I was sneezing. Yeah, uh, sorry. to mute yourself. Um, yeah, they, they they've got what is it four nice blitzers, and then the rest of the team has been beaten up a bit. I mean, um, but those four nice blitzers, two of them are vampire blitzers, which are pretty. That's pretty love sweet, isn't it? You know. Yeah, I'd not actually noticed that. That's probably the reason why you keep playing this team at this point. Yeah. Blackhawks have died. Literally no skills on the linemen. <laughs> you know. Uh, no troll. So you know maybe. You know the troll is a is like the beast of Nurgle. Not a bad player if you just leave him standing where he is as a as a strength strength player and then hopefully gets guard and stands where he is with maybe even stand firm guard being annoying but if you're running seven strength four players do you need the troll and he does have a lot of guard jacob beef he actually like basically except for the thrower every player who's leveled up has guard which you know i can respect i'm told that's the way you build orcs is just guard spam yeah well it, basically it keeps your players alive if you put Put a big wall of guard there, especially like most killy chaos teams, like we've we've already seen, don't uh, you know don't have the room for for guard as much. So you know you, you're going to be able to to out guard them and protect your players who are already quite strong by uh, you know uh, refusing them blocks effectively, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah, very good team. Three frenzy seems uh, interesting. Actually, okay. now I've just noticed got, that. Got the guard, so. But you know, three is quite a lot. Um, but yeah, I guess maximizing blocks by getting follow-up blocks, kind of thinking. But don't don't also, hate it, but you know. Frenzy on like strength four pieces can also be quite nice to as a way to wedge them. In amongst groups where there isn't that much guard on the uh, yeah, you hit one player and follow up into that group, which can then lead to some other blocks sometimes because you've got frenzy. Sorry, you, uh, you've got guard in the middle. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm. <clears throat> I mean, he'd. You'd have to hope you're the the better coach because that could, you know, even with strength four, that can lead you into into troubling places, right? Yeah, yeah I see. I had trouble with that because I did it with Norse and that wasn't a very good yeah uh, by the way Rob tell me if uh, or when or oh, uh, when 
GCBC starts. I have a feeling from the fact that some people have gone that maybe GCBC... No, still not started. Okay. Uh, yeah, someone wants to ping me when it, when it actually starts. That would be great. I think it's just gone live. Oh, has it? Okay, well, I just did a refresh. Or, or, or at least the stream is up. Ah, uh, okay. All right, so last, let's have a quick look for the last two last uh, uh, Orc teams, and then we can the host... Um, Lots to watch, and a quick summary of who we think top three. Yeah, exactly. I haven't actually decided who mine are yet. <laughs> uh, the Great Escape, Just a Bully. Yeah, sorry, go on then. What are you going to say? I'll just make it up when it's time. Hmm, yeah. Um, a team with a block troll, so actually a troll, which I like. All four of their black orcs. And, you know, guard spamming, or trying to guard spam, I guess. Uh, two of the blitzers not with guard spam yet, but you know a jump up killer and a plus strength frenzy strip tackle. That's that both pretty nice. That don't necessarily like uh, fend on the killer. I mean, you tend to get killers going for other killers, right? So it makes sense to to fend off you know opposing killers from piling on you. I think personally, I <coughs> like jugs. Hmm. I like jugs for the same reason that I like Fend. Is it, it stop? You know, jugs stops Fend working. I guess uh, you know. Yeah, I just prefer on that killer player. You're mm. trying to get people uh, on the floor and get maximise the amount of times you can hit them and pile on. Hmm. So, I prefer jugs rather than Fend in this situation because then you can hit uh, wrestle players and you can hit Fend player, and so you know it, it gives you. The, far more opportunity to get players on the floor so you can pile on whereas Fend isn't doing as much here it's just protecting him um, in some situations but generally you should be protecting your killer like yourself by positioning rather than having to rely on Fend okay uh, actually I have okay so cool uh, you know Different, different opinions. There is that thing where maybe he can, he can like I, I protect some of my piling on players by by piling on, if that makes sense, you know. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> I, I think Fend is as good a skill pick as other option. Hmm. Um, but the one thing to say on this is, although players have less skills than Jacob Eve's walk team, he's got a full roster here and has got skills across. Whereas Jacob Eve got. Um, all of the skills on just four players, and the rest of the team looked a little bit lackluster by comparison. Yeah, no, I think this again, like for me, I see a lot of, uh, you know, for me, it's important for a team to be using what they've got, if that makes sense. So, you know, this is a better orc team, even though some of a lot of it isn't as, as well developed as um, the last one we saw. Uh, it's still. It's like it's got more more weapons and more more things to play with. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if you've got just two good players and those two good players get removed, what do you do? Yeah, exactly. Okay, and so the last orc team before we hand you over to to GCBC uh, and or make our thingies is uh, Jawbat's Pulby Razor. I don't know how how you pronounce that, but yeah. Um, uh, Again, he's got players, but I think this team is kind of in a bit of a mess at the minute. It's kind of it needs some rebuild. I mean, he clearly has gone through some damage, but he looks like he's still winning games. Uh, you know, maybe. Was... I think he had two seasons of uh, getting beaten up and dropped down to tier three. And has now just come back up. Uh, so he's, he's yeah. So, uh, it's a bit of a mess, though, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, I still number three Galva feels a bit of a mixed up player. I don't know. Kind of, I don't. Know, it's a weird combination of skill picks. It well, feels like he's more reacted to what he needed on a match by match basis with his skill picks than necessarily having a plan for that player. I think orcs do play a bit like that, where you, it, it's not like Claw Chaos, where you just, you know, you build a killer and you build a whatever. You, with orcs, you need everyone to have guard and a smattering of mighty blow to damage weaker teams and 
a tackle on a lot of players. And so you do end up with players that look like this. Um, maybe, but you know, it is it is pretty. It's very bitty, but it it's you know. It, imagine if you had a team that looked like this, it wouldn't be so bad. But the rest of the team being beaten up, and this being the standout player, makes it look worse. If you see what I'm saying, you know, if you had four good blitzers and one of them was a killer, and they all had guard and they all had mighty blow and they all had tackle, and this one just had Aji up and the rest the similar skills, it wouldn't look as crazy, would it? Yeah, true. Yeah? Um, anyway, so I have decided what my top three are. How are you doing for for, this, for your decision making? Uh, I need to just look at teams again. Okay, so I I am going to go for my uh, my third place team is going to be Doug Lowe's Dwarves. I think he's a great coach. It's a good team, but it's Dwarves, so he's not going to be quite at the top of the division just because they get a few draws when other teams might have got wins. Um, and I know Doug's probably very good at, at dealing with that, playing a lot of Kemri, but I still I still am, you know, hesitant to give them top or second, right? Um, Makes sense. Yeah. So then my uh, second place is going to be uh, Just a Bully and his uh, Nurgle team. No, wait. No, sorry. Just a bully and his orc, and his orc team. No, no. Just, yeah, a, just a bully's orcs, orcs. or Ripperdox Nurgle. Yeah. So uh, second place is is uh, just a bully's orcs. Um, in, in no way giving away what my top team is going to be. But you know that that kind of uh, you know the, the orc team still quite low TV. They can you know they they're uh, got all the weapons they need to deal with the other you know with the likes of the rats and the the zons and the dark elves whilst also being able to have enough chafe to deal with the claw kill teams i think uh it's a it's a, a it's like it's 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 a lean team rather than being a beaten up team if is, is would be my way of look, looking at it True. right and then top is ripper because for the same reason i think a team that's you know that's just got killers and is trying to kill will probably do quite well so that's my top three. And I've made a note of it. So, uh, you know, and I'm going to make a note of your top three as well. And we well, can... I don't know whether I ne necessarily have an order for the top three. Oh, okay, go on then. Just choose your three. Um, I'm going to tip Greg Cad based on previous four. Um, oh, damn it. I, forgot. I, I, was, I was preparing my list too much in the me meantime, and then we didn't. Then rushing yeah, over the so, chat. You're right, Greg. Is I probably... think he stands a very good chance of doing well with that Dark Elf team. Um, it's there's nothing exceptional about the team, but it's got all, all the things he needs to be able to give problems to other teams. There's not a huge amount of tackle in the mm -hmm. division, other than uh, the dwarves. Um, so I think they can do well as long as they don't get destroyed by the dwarf. Um, or get, they get destroyed early enough that they can rebuild for the rest of the season and kind of get up, because after that, it's not too... Um, I agree, Ripper Doc is, is someone to kind of look out for, just because it's a strong-looking Nurgle team. Mm -hmm. As long as um, like players don't retire during the season at critical moments, yeah. um, then, you know, it, it could be that teams retire as he... Um, loses other players and hasn't got the money to afford to replace them and things like that so he could end up being really screwed if it all happens at that wrong moment yeah but as it stands i kind of tip him and third choice i'm kind of split between either sid or um just because i know doug is a really good player but for some of the reasons you said he may not like he may have too many draws to put him up there and I think Sid as long as the team um, kind of copes against some of the other claw teams then he could do quite well because he's a good coach so that's probably I know we said three but I've gone four wait sorry who uh, I've got Greg Cad Ripper Doc and Insidious who's the four or Doug or Doug okay. Doug, Doug or Sid yeah okay cool you know, hedging your bets um, and and making friends in UK BBL before you go to the tabletop. <laughs> well, who knows if tabletop 
will happen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was thinking about that today, actually. So I haven't actually signed up for the tabletop, but... Um, I, um, it's looking less and less likely for me now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I it, we'll see what happens. But I, that, that would be the four that I kind of go with. Okay, cool. Well, I have no clue about bottom. Probably me. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I mean, basically, after, I, I think you're. I, think, I, I missed out, Greg. I should have put Greg in my top three. But uh, below that, I think there is a lot of. Uh, oh, look, Justin Bullies just joined. Ha. Huh. Um, Below that, I think there is a lot of very equal level coaches and teams. So I think choosing bottom would actually be even harder than choosing top, and choosing top's not that easy. I think, uh, as you kind of alluded to, a lot of this will depend on how much claw fires in certain matches. Yeah, exactly. Um, strength of schedule, all those kind of factors that always come in in, in this game. Yeah. Um, so like I say, if, if Greg Cad faces Doug and Doug destroys the elves. Or destroys the Zons, then mm -hmm. that kind of writes off the season for either of those teams. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks for that, uh, Graf. I will, uh, you know, I'm. Uh, we'll we'll do this again at some point through the season. Or yeah. Soon. Last time we did like a mid-season recap and then some towards the end. Yeah. Exactly. So we'll we'll go for that again. Um, and in the meantime, I'll hand you over to Gav Coleman and. The final of the what sits. Okay. Cool. Have a good one. Cheers. Bye. Cheers, cheers, Ribbonot. Good luck for the season. <laughs>